physical quantities and measurement measurement of length importance of measurement we often ask very common questions like what is the length of this room how long are you waiting what is your age etc study of physics is based on measurement in physics we usually learn how to measure quantities that are involved in it among these quantities some are length mass time temperature pressure and electric current anything which is measurable is called a physical quantity we measure each physical quantity in its own units by comparing it with a standard without measurement we cannot make the correct judgment about length area volume etc an arbitrary estimate gives us a wrong information about the dimensions of an object example 1 two lines xp and yq are given below look at the two straight lines xp and yq drawn alongside which of them is longer you may guess that yq appears to be shorter than xp but when you measure with the help of a ruler you find that both the lines are equal in length thus we can say that in this case length is the basic measurement and ruler is the tool needed to measure the length fact in ancient egypt water clocks were used to measure time a container is filled with water and the water is drained slowly the amount of water dripping from one bowl filled with water to another marked the time passed example 2 two glasses containing milk are given below in the above figure two glasses contain milk it is difficult to guess which glass contains more milk we can only tell it with the help of measurement some other examples one a vegetable vendor sells vegetables fruits etc by measuring their mass two a carpenter measures the length and breadth of the wood before giving it the shape of a door think what will happen if he does it without proper measurement three you take the help of a clock to reach school on time four a doctor checks the fever of the patient by measuring the body temperature five a milkman measures the quantity volume of milk before selling it from the above examples we see that measurement is an integral part of our daily life in this chapter we will learn to measure length mass time and temperature need for accurate measurement to know the correct mass volume and length of an object we must measure these physical quantities accurately we purchase milk by volume cloth by length floor tiles by area timber wood by volume and fruits and vegetables by mass in the same way each and every component of a machine should have high degree of accuracy of measurement what would happen if each part of a machine has its own standard of measurement components of a machine are manufactured at different places If each component is different in measurement there will be a difficulty in assembling the machine to remove all such difficulties measurements are controlled very accurately the water tap you bring from the market fits into any pipe of its measurement this could not have been possible without a control on the accuracy of measurements expensive metals like gold silver and platinum are weighed extremely accurately often errors occur while measuring hence various methods are used to minimize and correct the errors more the number of observations less will be the possibility of errors the error in measurement inside a laboratory can be minimized by taking average of measurements the average can be given as average is equal to sum of observations divided by number of observations thus 
measurement can be defined as the comparison of an unknown quantity with a known standard quantity approximation in measurement in our daily life sometimes we need only approximate near to accurate measurement the approximate estimation is a quicker judgment about any measurement examples 1 we add salt in vegetables by a quick judgment or approximation 2 painter paints the wall by mixing an approximate quantity of water 3 we add sugar in a glass of milk by an approximate estimation hence we can say that approximation is the rough idea about the measurement of a physical quantity they are not accurate measurements but quite near to the correct measurements units of measurement measurement requires the comparison of an unknown quantity with some known fixed quantity of the same kind this known fixed quantity is called the unit each and every measurement consists of two parts one a number called numerical value two a symbol or alphabet that denotes the unit associated with it examples one when we say quantity of tomato is 5 kg then 5 is the numerical value and kilogram is the unit of mass two If the amount of milk is 4 liter then 4 is the numerical value and liter is the unit of volume Nowadays to measure the length we use the unit meter In ancient times the length was measured by comparing it with the length of the body parts A cubit was the unit of length 1 cubit was the length between tip of the fingers and the elbow similarly a hand span was the length from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger these methods were inaccurate because the size of fingers differ from person to person in the same way one cannot use a glass to measure the exact volume of the liquid such a system of measurement was not correct to express the measurement we should know 1 a unit in which the quantity is measured 2 the magnitude of the numerical value associated with it activity to measure the length using hand span use your hand span to measure the length of the table now ask your friend to use his hand span to measure the length you will notice that there is a difference between the two measurements therefore for reliable and accurate measurement we need the standard units of measurement standard unit to overcome variations in the measurement the need of a system of standard units was felt a unit which is acceptable by a majority of people as a basic unit of measurement is called standard unit the internationally accepted system of units is called SI standard international units this system of units was adopted in october 1960 in 12th international general conference on weights and measures it was agreed that the unit of physical quantity should have following characteristics 1 the unit should have a convenient size 2 its value should not change with respect to place and time 3 the system of units should be acceptable everywhere 4 it should be well defined fundamental units of si system the fundamental units do not depend on any other units they have their own values the si system has seven fundamental units which are given below table the base quantities of the si system of units quantity unit symbol length meter m mass kilogram kg time second s electric current ampere a temperature kelvin 
K. Luminous intensity, candela, CD. Amount of a substance, mol, MOL. In our country, National Physical Laboratory, NPL, situated in New Delhi is authorized to maintain the national standards for all the basic units in India. Multiples of units. Multiples are the factors used to create larger forms of units. For measuring long distances of length, meter and centimeter are not convenient. For example, the distance between Delhi and Lucknow is approximately 5 lakh meters which is inconvenient to use. The easy way to say this is, the distance between Lucknow to Delhi is 500 kilometers. Here, kilo means thousand, 1000 meter is equal to 1 kilometer. The higher units are called multiples of units. Multiples are the factors used to create larger forms of units. Submultiples of units. Submultiples are the factors used to create the smaller forms of units. Sometimes we have to measure smaller lengths, then we use submultiples of units. For example, if we want to measure the length of a small wire, we measure in centimeters or millimeters. These are submultiples of units. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeters. 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. Fact. The size of molecules is measured in small units like micron or angstrom. 1 micron is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 6 meters. 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 10 meters. Table. Multiples and submultiples of units factors, prefixes and symbols. Factor, prefix, symbol of prefix. 1000, kilo, k. 100, hecto, h. 10, deca, dam. 1, meter, m. 0 0.1, 1 by 10, deci, dm. 0 0.01 1 by 100 centi c 0 0.001 1 by 1000 milli m 0 0.000001 1 upon 10 lakh micro derived units the units which are obtained with the help of the fundamental units are called derived units. They strictly depend on the fundamental units. The derived units are formed by the combination of one or more fundamental units. Volume is equal to length into breadth into height is equal to meter into meter into meter is equal to meter cube. Speed is equal to distance in meters divided by time in seconds is equal to meter per second. Direct measurement of length. To measure the length, we need some measuring devices. For example, a measuring tape is used by a tailor. A metallic meter rod is used by a cloth merchant. A scale is used by you to measure the length of lines and figures and to draw lines of the given lengths. Normally, we use a meter scale or half meter scale for measuring the length. The scale is calibrated in centimeters and millimeters. Suppose we want to measure the length of a rod. The zero mark on the scale is set to coincide with one end of the rod as shown in the figure. The reading on the other end gives the length of the rod. Activity To measure the length of a line. Place a scale along the line AB such that zero on the scale coincides with point A. Note down the reading on the scale which coincides with point B. This reading gives you length of the line AB. To make accurate measurement, 
we require a proper measuring device the choice of the measuring device depends upon the following 1 the size of the object to be measured 2 the shape of the object to be measured 3 the degree of accuracy required vernier calipers and screw gauze are two such instruments which are used to measure very small lengths accurately such as the diameter of an electric wire indirect methods of measurement of length a ruler cannot be used to measure the circumference of a cylinder because the circumference is a curved surface and a ruler is a straight rigid object therefore we cannot bend the ruler around a curved object when the measurement cannot be measured directly we use indirect method of measurement for this the measurement system has to be modified let us perform the following activities to understand how we can measure the length using indirect methods activity to measure the diameter of a circular or spherical object take a metal spherical ball and two wooden blocks place the spherical ball between two blocks mark the point of contact of sphere with the blocks using a ruler measure the distance between the inner faces of the two blocks which are in contact with the sphere if the ruler is placed and shown in the figure the difference between the two readings on the ruler gives the diameter of the sphere activity to measure the length of a curved line take a thread and tie a knot on its one end to measure the length of a given curved line place the knot of the thread at one end of the line now move the thread along the length of the curved line carefully hold the thread at small distances between your thumb and first finger continue in this manner till you reach the other end of the curved line using a ball pen put a mark on the thread where it just touches the last point on the line now stretch the thread along a meter scale and measure the length from the knot to the ink mark the length of this portion is the length of the given curved line activity to measure the thickness of a coin take some identical coins say 20 to 25 in number and place them one over the other all these coins will make a cylindrical column the height of this stack of coins can easily be measured by a ruler placed vertically against it to find the thickness of a single coin divide the total thickness by the number of the coins so thickness of a coin is equal to total thickness divided by number of coins measurement of mass mass the mass of a body is the quantity of the matter contained in it measurement of mass when we purchase tomatoes from the market the vendor measures the mass of tomatoes by a balance the beam balance is used to measure the mass it has a long beam having a support at the center and two identical pans suspended at equal distances from the center of the beam the object to be weighed is placed on one pan and standard weights are placed on the other till both the pans are perfectly balanced the total of the standard weights give mass of the object the process is called weighing and the standard mass used for the comparison is called weight in a laboratory we use a more accurate balance known as physical balance it is also used to measure mass of gold chemicals required for making medicines etc it is highly accurate in measurement unit of mass the si unit of mass is kilogram kg and its sub multiple is gram g multiples and sub multiples of unit of mass 1000 mg mg is equal to 1 gram g 1000 g g is equal to 1 kg kg 100 kg is equal to 
1 quintal. 10 quintals is equal to 1 metric ton. Note, we must not confuse ourselves considering both mass and weight as the same physical quantities. Mass is the amount of matter contained while weight is the force with which the earth attracts a body towards its centre. Measurement of time The interval between two events is called time. We measure time with the help of mean solar day. It is defined as time taken by the earth to complete one rotation about its own axis. The mean solar day is divided into 24 equal intervals and each interval is called an hour. One hour is further divided into 60 equal parts and each part is called a minute. One minute is further divided into 60 equal parts and each part is called a second. Ancient Methods of Time Measurement Time has always been important to mankind. The occurrence of day and night was used for the measurement of time in ancient days. With the passage of time, a candle clock, a water clock, a sundial, a sand clock etc. were discovered for more accurate measurement. The sundial was used to record time in days of Alexander the Great, 300 BCE. It is based on the fact that shadow of an object changes its position and length with the position of sun in the sky. Some historical sundials still exist in India. They are situated in Ujjain, Jaipur, Delhi and Varanasi. They are designed and built by Maharaja Jai Singh of Jaipur. The time indicated by these sundials are correct. However, these do not work after sunset or on cloudy days. Modern clocks and watches also measure time with the help of events that repeat after a fixed time interval. The simple pendulum is an example. In a pendulum clock, time is measured by making use of the time taken by the pendulum for each oscillation. A simple pendulum is defined as a heavy point mass suspended with the help of a light inextensible string of negligible weight. Its initial position is at O. When it is taken to position A and released, it goes to B via O. This process continues alternately. The to and fro motion of the pendulum is called the periodic motion. One complete to and fro motion is called an oscillation. In figure, initially pendulum is in mean position O. A and B are its extreme positions. One oscillation constitutes the movement of the bob from O to A and A to B and back to O. The time taken by bob to complete one oscillation is called its time period. Device for measuring time interval The time interval of an event is measured with the help of stopwatch. It is shown in the adjacent figure. We generally measure the minimum time in one second from our clock. But sometimes we require to measure one hundredth part of a second. For this, we need a highly accurate electronic watch. These watches are used to measure time for athletic events. Units of Time Second is the SI unit of time. It is followed all over the world. We represent it as S. Relationship between different units of time. 60 seconds is equal to 1 minute. 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. 24 hours is equal to 1 day. 365 days approximately is equal to 1 year. 10 years is equal to 1 decade. 10 decades is equal to 1 century is equal to 100 years. 10 centuries is equal to 1 millennium is equal to 1000 years. Other units. 1 mean solar day is equal to 24 hours is equal to 24 into 60 minutes is equal to 
24 into 60 into 60 seconds is equal to 8,64,000 seconds. Do you know? In the Middle Ages, candle clocks measured off equal units of time as the flames melted the wax. 24-hour clock time Commonly, we use a 12-hour clock. In such a clock, the time from 12 o'clock at night to 12 o'clock at noon is given a suffix AM and the time from 12 o'clock noon to 12 o'clock night is given the suffix PM. Many sectors like railways, airlines etc. use 24-hour clock. Some digital clocks and watches also display 24-hour time instead of 12-hour time. In this clock, time is not repeated on the same day and no AM or PM is used. The time schedule is as follows. 0000 to 12 is midnight to noon. 12 to 24, noon to midnight. 0 hour, 0 minutes denotes exactly midnight time and 12 hour, 0 minutes denotes exactly noon time. The relationship between 12 hour clock time to 24 hour clock time is shown below. 12 hour clock time, 24 hour clock time, 1 am, 1 hours, 4 am, 4 hours, 6.30 am, 6.30 hours, 12 noon, 12 hours, 1 pm, 13 hours, 10.45 pm, 22.45 hours, 12 midnight, 24 hours, 0 hour, 0 to 0 hour. In a 24 hour clock, time is shown by 4 units. The first two digits indicate the number of hours and the next two digits indicate the number of minutes. For example, 1.30 am is expressed as 1 hour 30 minutes and 10.30 pm is expressed as 22 hours 30 minutes. Measurement of Temperature Temperature is defined as the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. We can feel the effect of heat when we sit near a hot body. The instrument which is used to measure the temperature of a substance is called a thermometer. Thermo means heat and meter means measurement. A thermometer works on the principle that a liquid expands on heating and contracts on cooling. Temperature scale a liquid thermometer have a bulb at one end and a long stem which is graduated in degrees. The scale of a thermometer is usually divided between two points. One is melting point of pure ice, 0 degree Celsius and the other is boiling point of pure water, 100 degree Celsius. These two points are called the lower fixed point and the upper fixed point. In general, measurement of temperature is divided into three scales. Celsius scale, Fahrenheit scale and Kelvin scale. The Celsius scale of temperature was designed by Anders Celsius, 1701 to 1744. The unit of measurement of temperature in this scale is degree Celsius, zero degree Celsius. The lower fixed point of the scale Ice point is 0 degree Celsius and the upper fixed point, steam point, is 100 degree Celsius. The interval between the lower fixed point and upper fixed point is divided into 100 equal parts. The value of each division is 1 degree Celsius. On the Fahrenheit scale, the lower and the upper fixed points are 32 degree Fahrenheit and 212 degree Fahrenheit respectively. The distance between these two points is divided into 180 equal parts. Each division is equal to 1 degree Fahrenheit. The different types of thermometers are 1. Clinical doctor's thermometer 2. Laboratory thermometer 3. 
maximum and minimum temperature thermometer. In thermometers, the sensitive liquid used in mercury because it is a shining liquid. In maximum and minimum thermometer, the liquid used is alcohol. Clinical thermometer. It is also called the doctor's thermometer. It is used to measure the temperature of the human body. It measures the temperature in Fahrenheit scale. It consists of a thin capillary tube having a small cylindrical bulb at its lower end. The bulb and the part of the capillary tube is filled with pure mercury. There is a small bend in the tube called constriction kink just above the bulb. When the thermometer is placed in the patient's mouth below the tongue or under the armpit, the mercury expands. It pushes through the kink into the capillary tube. The kink ensures that the mercury does not move back into the bulb when the thermometer is taken out of patient's mouth. This gives us time to take the reading after removing the thermometer from the patient's mouth. After taking the reading, mercury can be made to return to the bulb by giving jerks to the thermometer again and again. Laboratory Thermometer A laboratory thermometer is used to measure temperature in the laboratories during various experiments. Generally, it is graduated from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. When the bulb is heated or cooled, mercury in the bulb expands or contracts and rises up or goes down through the capillary tube. The mercury can be seen through the stem as a thin shining thread. Mercury is preferred to other liquids as it is a liquid metal, good conductor of heat and expands uniformly. Maximum and Minimum Thermometer You must have seen the maximum and the minimum temperatures recorded in various metropolitan cities on your television screen. Similarly, most newspapers give the maximum and minimum temperatures of a city for previous day under the heading of weather report. This thermometer was invented by James VI in the 18th century. Therefore, it is named after him as Sixes Thermometer. This thermometer measures the minimum and maximum temperature attained during the day. It is used by the meteorologist to record the highest and lowest temperature of a place on a given day. Unit of Temperature SI unit of temperature is Kelvin, K. 0 degree Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvin. 100 degree Celsius is equal to 373 Kelvin. Scientist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, 1686 to 1736, was a German physicist, engineer and glass blower who is best known for inventing the alcohol thermometer 1709, the mercury thermometer 1714 and for developing a temperature scale now named after him. According to Fahrenheit's 1724 article, he determined that scale by reference to three fixed points of temperature. The lowest temperature was achieved by preparing a frigorific mixture of ice, water and ammonium chloride, a salt, and the reading there was taken as zero Fahrenheit. The second reference point was selected as the reading of the thermometer when it was placed in still water when ice was just forming on the surface. This was assigned as 32 degree Fahrenheit. The third calibration point was taken as 96 degree Fahrenheit when the instrument was placed under the arm or in the mouth. Measurement of area The extent of the surface occupied by an object is called its area. Area is the region enclosed within the boundaries of a two-dimensional figure. A two-dimensional figure has only two dimensions, namely length and breadth. Squares, rectangles, triangles and circles are all examples of two-dimensional figures. 
measuring area of regular shapes the area a of a regular surface such as squares rectangles and triangles can be calculated by using specific formula 1 area of a square is equal to side into side is equal to side square 2 area of a rectangle is equal to length into breadth l into b l is equal to length b is equal to breadth 3 area of a triangle is equal to half into b into h b is equal to base h is equal to height unit of area is square meter meter square 1 meter square is the area of a square whose each side is 1 meter when we need to measure the area of a big surface like a room a garden or a building we need bigger units of area like air and hectare one air is equal to 10 meter into 10 meter is equal to 100 meter square one hectare is equal to 100 meter into 100 meter is equal to 10000 meter square the areas of countries and continents can be measured in square kilometers kilometer square one square kilometer is equal to 1 kilometer into 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter into 1000 meter is equal to 10000 meter square the area of a very small surface like the area of the base of a geometry box can be measured in square centimeter 1 square centimeter is equal to 1 cm into 1 cm is equal to 10 mm into 10 mm is equal to 100 mm square measuring area of irregular shapes irregular shapes do not have easily measurable dimensions therefore it is difficult to have a formula for measuring the area of an irregularly shaped region areas of irregular shapes can be determined with the help of a graph paper a graph paper has equal sized squares of sides 1 cm each and smaller squares of sides 1 mm each activity to measure the area of an irregular shape by using a graph paper place an irregularly shaped object on a graph paper and trace its outline on the graph paper you will find that there will be some complete squares and some incomplete squares within the outline of the object count the number of complete squares within the outline shown by the symbol 3 then count the number of incomplete squares that are half or more than half within the outline shown by the symbol dot ignore the squares with less than half part within the outline the sum of the number of the complete squares and the number of squares with half or more than half within the outline gives the approximate area of the given irregular object the area of the shape is equal to area of four complete squares plus area of four half or more than half squares is equal to area of eight squares is equal to 8 squares is equal to 1 cm square is equal to 8 cm square indirect methods of measurement of length a ruler cannot be used to measure the circumference of a cylinder because the circumference is a curved surface and a ruler is a straight rigid object therefore we cannot bend the ruler around a curved object when the measurement cannot be measured directly we use indirect method of measurement for this the measurement system has to be modified let us perform the following activities to understand how we can measure the length using indirect methods activity to measure the diameter of a circular or spherical object take a metal spherical ball and two wooden blocks Place the spherical ball between two blocks. Mark the point of contact of sphere with the blocks. Using a ruler, measure the distance between the inner faces of the two blocks which are in contact with the sphere. If the ruler is placed and shown in the figure, the difference between the two readings on the ruler gives the diameter of the sphere. 
activity to measure the length of a curved line take a thread and tie a knot on its one end to measure the length of a given curved line place the knot of the thread at one end of the line now move the thread along the length of the curved line carefully hold the thread at small distances between your thumb and first finger continue in this manner till you reach the other end of the curved line using a ball pen put a mark on the thread where it just touches the last point on the line now stretch the thread along a meter scale and measure the length from the knot to the ink mark the length of this portion is the length of the given curved line activity to measure the thickness of a coin take some identical coins say 20 to 25 in number and place them one over the other all these coins will make a cylindrical column the height of this stack of coins can easily be measured by a ruler placed vertically against it to find the thickness of a single coin divide the total thickness by the number of the coins so thickness of a coin is equal to total thickness divided by number of coins